Of the 10 women on death row in Texas, half stand convicted of crimes involving the murder, abduction, or endangerment of a child. Darlie Routier is married to her high school sweetheart and raising three boys in an affluent Dallas suburb when in June of 1996, two of her children are found brutally stabbed to death on her living room floor. Though Darley had summoned police to the crime scene, within 20 minutes of their arrival, she had become the lead suspect in the case. Her arrest came rapidly, and only seven months later, Darley Routier was sentenced to capital punishment. In the next hour, renowned filmmaker Werner Herzog speaks with Darley about her children, her case, and her life on death row. Death penalty exists in 33 states of the United States of America. However, in recent years, a much smaller number has actually performed them. Executions are carried out by lethal injection. As a German, coming from a different historical background and being a guest in the United States, I respectfully disagree with the practice of capital punishment. Gatesville, Texas. This is the Mountain View Correctional Facility. A van arrives with a single female inmate inside, barely visible, like a spectre. This is Darlie Routier, sentenced to death for the murder of her two children. Because of a potential suicide risk, prison authorities have dressed her in a gown made of tissue paper. Mountain View Unit is a prison for women, which also houses the handful of female death row inmates in Texas. She will remain here until her execution, which will take place in the death chamber in Huntsville, some 150 miles away. Looking at the scene reminds me of medieval passion plays of my home, Bavaria. Do you have any comments? Is there anything you would like to say? Darlie Rotier, you have been here at Mountain View Unit on death row for how long? I came here early February 1997. Which means 15 years now. Yes, sir. How does this isolation feel for you? How do you cope with it? <sighs> well... <clears throat> I think that I'm very blessed to have a lot of um, family, friends, supporters that um, are very encouraging, um, supportive in my fight. Um, it is hard. It is a very, um, you're isolated. You're isolated from the world. You're cut off from your family, from life. This was Darlie Routier's world in Rawlett, a suburb of Dallas. The neighborhood looks affluent, big homes, manicured lawns. Nothing points to the darkest imaginable crimes. But it was from here, the Routier's home, that an emergency call was made at 2.31 on the morning of June 6, 1996. The caller was Darley Routier. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. Come on, try to get an ambulance to you. No, no, no. What's going on, ma'am? Oh, my God! 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 Oh, my God!
Two of Darlie's boys were stabbed to death. Her third child, a boy just seven months old, slept upstairs and remained unharmed. This is Damon on the left and Devon, the older one, to the right. There were five and six when they died. You were tried only, only for the death of your younger son, Damon. Yes. Which means uh, this made it a capital murder case because he was under six. Right. He was only five. Yes. How do you remember the child, the boy? How do I remember Damon? Yes, how do you remember him? Damon was a lot different from Devin. Damon was, he was a little more shy. He was um, a big mama's boy. <laughs> he was the type that, um, he was more quieter, but he, he loved to play with all the other kids, but he was more quiet. He wasn't, you know, as loud. And um, where Devin was more, he was funny. He was um, always, making jokes and being silly and but when they when they were together they balanced each other let's assume for some reasons um, you will be released from death row authorities still can charge you with the murder of your other boy is that correct technically they can um, the way that the trial was played out even though i was only i was on trial for damon's the whole during the whole trial it wasn't just about Damon it was about Devin and Damon um, the work that's being done in the case to prove my innocence it's not going to just prove that I did not murder Damon it's going to prove that I did not murder either of my children back to the crime scene as investigators gathered evidence their suspicions quickly turned to Darley. Even the first responder soon had his doubts. David Waddell, can you tell me what you saw? When I first pulled up in front of the house, I saw a man running out the front door. Um, I got out of my car, I yelled at him, had him stop in the front yard to see who he was. Uh, it was Darren Routier. The husband? Yes, Darley's husband. I asked him what he was doing. He told me that he did live at the house and he was going across the street to find a nurse who lived across the street. What was the scene? What did you see? She was still on the telephone talking to the dispatcher, trying to describe what was going on. Um, I saw the two boys in the living room floor. Uh, one of them obviously uh, deceased already. Um, the other one was moving her along the floor and she was standing a few feet away from him, talking on the phone. Moving along the floor, meaning? Just maybe almost like a slow crawl. Um, he was bleeding, gurgling for breath. Um, it was apparent that it was obvious that he was still alive. I'll never forget his face. Um, he was looking up at us with his eyes open. Gurgling blood, looking just like he, he was scared. Was fear. He knew he was dying. I believe so. When investigators enter the Rudier house in Dalrock Heights, they walk into a nightmare. Two of Darley and Darren Rudier's young boys have been savagely attacked with a knife. Darren, Darren did come back from across the street. And I told him to try to help the other boy, and he did. He tried to help the one in the middle of the living room. I don't recall the names or which one was which, but um, at one point I remember looking over at him to see if he was helping him, and he was doing CPR. And with each breath, there was a shower of blood coming out of the little boy's chest, and it was it was obvious that he was he was gone. And Darley herself. And Darley was standing by the bar between the kitchen and the living room. Um, I really wasn't concerned about her boys because she, she asked me about her jewelry 
that was sitting on the counter. She asked me if anybody had stolen her jewelry. Um, she told me she messed with the, the butcher knife that was used to kill her kids. She told me she'd grabbed it and uh, messed up the fingerprints on it. I believe there was an intruder in the house up until the, we actually searched the house and didn't find one. I thought he was, I thought he was still in the house um, until my backup arrived and we were able to search and make sure he wasn't. Until then, I was expecting to come around the corner any time. And apparently there was no intruder. No. Um, it was just, it was a day like any other day, you know. Um, I had gone to sleep. Um, the boys were sleeping with, downstairs with me. And um, the next thing I remember is Damon on my shoulder. And he was pushing on my shoulder. And he was saying, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. And when I first, you know, woke, I could see a man that was going into the kitchen. Well, I got up. Damon followed behind me. You saw him because the TV was on. The TV was on. We had a big screen TV behind us. And light was still on? Or yes, was yes. And um, as I got up, Damon followed behind me. And by the time I got to the corner of the kitchen, I could see the man going out into the utility room, out into the garage. One thing that I am puzzled about is the uh, wounds that you sustained. Were they not uh, a strong evidence for your truthfulness? Uh, yes, I believe so. My can you describe, my neck the, can was, you describe the attack? My on? neck was cut from one side to the can other. Can you still see it? It was said on a stand that by the doctor that um, did the surgery, that the carotid artery was actually nicked, but it was not cut the whole way through. And they said, had it been cut two millimeters more, which is a very, very tiny, tiny amount, that I would have bled to death within minutes. We wouldn't sit I would not be here sitting together. here today. Yes. I was stabbed in the arm. I was stabbed. Do we still see a scar? Yeah. Can you lift it higher, please? Yeah. Can you see it? Yes. Greg Davis, you were a prosecutor in case Darlie Routier. What kind of person did you encounter? You know, I encountered someone that I didn't expect to encounter. Um, because when I got involved in this case, the very last thing that I expected was to find a mother who had killed her two children. Uh, that, that was a foreign concept to me. So when we got into the case what i encountered was someone uh, who was depraved who was evil who was selfish who was self-focused and who was in a state of denial quite frankly about what she had done in this case and when you look at darley you see someone who is caught up in her own life who wants things her way who is unhappy with her state of affairs who's having financial problems, having marital problems, and I think who saw these two children 